All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, this is, uh, if you're listening live, thank you very much. Congratulations to you, and uh, I appreciate the, your your attention. Uh, we have been, I, I said during a previous episode that I'm going to be a moving target for the next, uh, I don't know, a while. And I have been. We've been moving targets. We've been moving all over the friggin' place. I was in three states in three days. Um so I, I, feel, I feel like a dish rag, and uh, I'm going to admit to you, I just poured the last of my famous grouse into this cup. What would you pour in yours? Basil Hayden Subtle Smoke. Okay. And I've last, got, some, and I've got no, some nice good old water. No excuses. No apologies. No apologies. Tink, tink, tink. Wait, wait, wait. All right, so we here. got a, but we will have a Duracode finish firearm segment for you. We will have a Brownells bullet point for you. We will have a homeroom. And we've got some good news and we got some bad news. We got some bad news and we got some good news. And uh, I hate you. Know, like, well, don't tell me bad news. Just tell me good news. Well, you know, I could, we could just like whistle <whistles> and pretend that every little thing going to be all right as the criminals who are inhabiting the place, the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah uh, here in the United States, known as Washington, D.C., set about to dismantle our Constitution and our nation. So um, uh, we could uh, we could just pretend that that's not happening, but pretending it's not happening is not going to make it stop happening. So we're going to deal with that. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, on Thursday and Friday, we'll have some other stuff. We'll have the big boy, big girl hour, and we'll talk about some relevant things. But for now, for now, I'm going to be quiet and let Zach play the music, and we're going to get into this. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. So before we get into this, I want to just mention a little something, a little something, something. This morning... Yeah, it was it was beautiful. It was a gorgeous morning. It, it was it was yeah. cold. It was it was insanely cold for June. It rained. Uh, yeah, it, it got some of that. A, a storm. It was, it was ninety-five degrees three days ago, and then a storm blew in and dropped the temperature thirty degrees or or more, forty degrees. While we're bullcrapping, yeah, it was it was forty-five when we woke up this morning. But the sun was out. The sun was shining. So as we were driving to the farm, where uh, I was, uh, I had the baby, I had Ruth in the truck. We were driving to the farm this morning and driving down the, the one country road that leads, you know, kind of out to the farm. And, and uh, you boys know how it is. There's just, there's, there's, it's like houses, but there's also, there's also pasture land. There's also corrals and, yeah. and what have you as you're going out there. And, I was driving down the road and I see off to the side, I see what looks like a person sitting on a, on a, 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 a gate on a fence, a pipe gate, you know? And as I get closer and I pass, I realize that it's a little girl. She's probably, I don't know, nine, 10 years old or whatever. She's sitting on the pipe gate and she's looking out at the, at the pasture, at the field, at the cattle. No cell phone, no iPod, just a kid out in the sunshine on a beautiful morning looking at the cattle. And, and just that, that little scene, that quick snippet, it was like the innocence of a child, you know? I'm sure she probably, I mean, she's seven or eight years old, maybe nine, I don't know, I could judge, but it was, a, you know, a kid didn't have anything to pride to do any responsibilities just embracing the sunshine and the outdoors in the country living. and the beauty of the day and the beauty of the day appreciating god's creation 
and just is just being an innocent kid, you know, just being an innocent kid. And contra, I want you guys to contrast that. I want you to contrast that image of an innocent child just sitting on a on a farm gate, on a cattle gate, you know, sitting there in the sun watching the watching the cattle move around in the field. I want you guys to to juxtapose that to the images that are being presented to us via the the rotten, just filth, filthy, disgusting American media. It's it's this is the month that that sinners and sodomites and and reprobates and degenerates have have uh, chosen to celebrate their sin and depravity. And it's not enough for them to engage in their own personal depravity. They have to shove it in your face. And I've seen enough news clips, video clips, whatever, of the depravity and the the degeneracy of these people. And you say, well, an adult can do whatever an adult wants to do in their privacy of their own bedroom, then they should be able to do. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about adults projecting their sick, twisted desires onto children. We're talking about children being roped into this behavior. And what it boils down to is simply this. We have sick, twisted, degenerate adults who have as their mission stealing and destroying the innocence of children. And if you're okay with that, you're a sick, twisted mother lover too, and you need to get out of my audience. Get out. Leave. I don't want you here. Oh, I don't have a problem with that because then the adults can do whatever adults want to do in the privacy of their own bedroom. But that's not what's happening. It's not the privacy of their own bedroom. No, it's right out in front. It's 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 shoving children's faces in it. You know what I've noticed about the the left and all these people? is the, their their scheme their their play is very very simple they look at you say it's not like we're gonna blank and then they slowly very quietly continue to do blank mm-hmm. until they get to the point where they're very bold and they start doing blank and act like they never said that like i remember there was like uh, like especially back at the very beginning of like the trans bathrooms thing there's like it's not like we're gonna come into your freaking kids classroom and tell them to be gay and here we are. And here, and yet here we are. But I just wanted to, to share that with you guys. I wanted to share that with the audience. That was something I experienced this morning. You know, I saw that and I thought, that is, the innoc- that is just a snapshot of the innocence of a child. And that's what children need. They need that time of innocence. They don't need you shoving gender psychotics down their throats. Okay? They leave the children alone and just let them be innocent. Oh man. So that's that's my uh that's my op ed for the beginning of this show. Duracoat Finished Firearms brought to you by a little company called Duracoat. And uh if you'd like to be Why did I forget that there was a, a bump music for that? I don't know. Uh, it's late in my brain. It's late. Yeah, we're past our bedtime. It's late and it's past my bedtime. We, my we seem to forget that there's bump music a lot lately. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you'd like to do a coat like a pro, you can. Uh, you can go to, you can follow the link. It's in the show notes. Uh, go to DuracoatUniversity.com. Well, it's not Duracoat University, but yeah. You can go to the Duracoat University link and learn to to uh, refinish guns and gear and things and anything you really want to, like a professional uh, Duracoat has more products, SKUs, offerings, things than any of the people who pretend to be their competition. Uh, you can, you know, as an American, you have a choice. You can choose to use an inferior product or you can choose to use Duracoat. So it's that easy. You can do whatever you want. Uh, 
when, when it comes to color choices, we had we had a, a conversation about uh, it was just a real quick thing about uh, vehicle colors and whether you know what color should you paint if you're going to redo a vehicle what what color scheme should you redo a vehicle uh, most people don't like white because white shows dirt you know but if you notice jared you know why all the work trucks and gov vehicles and so forth you know why they're white right because it reflects the heat no it's no because it's the cheapest paint there is oh you can have any color you want as long as it's white yeah yeah the the reason that all of your generic work trucks are just plain white with a sticker on the side is because that's the cheapest that's the cheapest thing they can do um is just slap plain old white paint on it uh, if you want fancy stuff you want different colors and what have you eh, it's going to cost you a little bit more but if it's just plain old white that's the least expensive thing um if, if you're going to if you are in an area and it might not be a big deal to you. you may say I, I live in an area where it's relatively cold and whatever and I don't care uh, but black black does absorb heat and if you don't believe me if you don't believe but black absorbs heat set an m16a a2 down in in the sun and then walk over and grip pick up the handguards it's hot. that sucker's hot man uh, well, I mean, in the summer when the sun's out. If you do it in the winter, it won't be like that. But uh, I, we we just had a, we had a color conversation, uh, and I thought that was interesting. Years ago, the you guys you remember what Jared? Do you remember when the Ohio State Highway Patrol had these metallic silver gray, metallic gray uh, cruisers? That was their cruisers were all a metallic silver gray, and they yeah. stopped doing it. You know why they stopped doing it? I don't, I don't remember what year, but no. Yeah. They stopped doing it because they, they did the math and they realized that they could save like something 100000 a year with when they replace vehicles by just painting them white and putting stickers on the side versus that, that special because they were ordering this special paint. And it was costing them like an extra umpteen thousand dollars per vehicle to do that. Uh, and, they, and believe it or not, in a, in a moment of weakness, they exercised a little bit of fiscal responsibility. Uh, it's probably all gone by now. They're like, it's the peasants' money. Screw them. Are we we'll still just write more ticket. Huh? Are we still talking about Derrico? We're talking about color choices. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know about colors. I was just wondering. Um, and, and a lot of people see. A lot of people don't think about that. You're like, oh, you know, red, black, gold, whatever. It's all the same. It doesn't matter. Um, so I, I I just thought that was interesting. I didn't have anything hardcore to talk about, uh, but we, it, we were talking about colors the other day, and I thought, well, it's Duracoat and Duracoat's colors, and let's talk about colors. So there you go. Oh, go to check out Duracoat University. Go to studentofthegun dot com slash Duracoat. Yes, take you exactly where you need to be to learn more about it. Uh, while you're on that page, you can find any color under the sun. If it's not, it's if it's not a choice that pre exists on the site for you you can send them a sample or call them and they can get you the color that you need. Yeah. That's something that we don't ever often talk about. Uh, but if, There's if so you much to talk about, right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But no, seriously, if you have a, and if you have a company logo, that is an exact color of blue, red, green, orange, whatever and the Pantone, I think is. The yeah. One. You have to get them the exact. It's a, it's a color game number. It's like, you know, if they don't have green 81 or blue 67 or yeah. it sounds like I'm calling plays green 81. Yeah. Blue 67. But if hut, you've got hut, a logo, hut. You likely have a branding guideline that has the hex color, the RGB, the CMYK, the Pantone, all that stuff. Just send them that information. RGB. So have it all. And you'll probably be good to go. People, people are like, what people are saying. There's people out here like colors don't have numbers. I was listening to this guy on the radio and he was trying to tell me that colors had numbers. That's funny. And I'm like, I'm not listening to that guy anymore. If you would like to use trying our, to trick me. Uh, student of the gun color and design, it's 007580. 0075 Alpha Delta. It's a student of the gun blue. It's student of the gun blue. There you go. Numbers don't have colors. Colors don't have numbers. <laughs> yes, they do. 
that would be a person operating uh that that's probably most of our audience actually is people that are not digital gurus so it's one of those things where oh you spend a lot of time you're in design and you're like yeah duh, duh colors have numbers yeah if you're an artist or whatever but if you're somebody that produces something physical in the real world then you you might not know well, if you if you're but now stuff, you do, you know, and that's why we're here. If you're painting stuff, you know, you're like, no, I went to Sherwin Williams, and the col- the colors are all like autumn harvest. We do know that. Um, well, absolutely Forest for sure, meadow. Duracoat matches our colors because we've done it before. Yep. But um, if you're maybe you don't want to use Duracoat for a wall in your house, probably you then go ahead and do that. But if you don't, then we know Sherwin Williams also matches. Or can find and, and get the paint color that is the student of the gun blue. Yeah. You so go. you're welcome. Uh, if you want to talk about black and silver, silver and black, well, if you go to SOTGGiveaway.com, that's SOTGGiveaway.com, there is a black and silver Takarov TPB, TBP, that's Tango Bravo Papa Marine Shotgun. And uh, hey. you have 15 days. Sorry, I just thought of this right now. My brain thought of it. Did we ever see or hear from the winner that won the uh, exclusive pistol with the sights on it at NRA show? No, we haven't yet. But Well, if you're listening and you're that winner, please let us know. Info at studentofthegun.com. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, so uh, you guys have 15 days and and three hours to sign up for that. Go to SOTGGiveaway.com, put in your info, sign up. You could be a winner. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Uh, High Point Firearms makes guns, and that is a statement that I'm willing to make right now at this moment in time. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, the the new and improved Yeet cannon to uh, to arrive. So Yeet Yeet Yeet. Uh, we because we were right in on that one. We were right there uh, at the very beginning. Uh, when <laughs> we were there for the deba- what what became, I would say, a debacle. <laughs> Uh, you got to be careful what you ask for, because sometimes you get it. <laughs> and that's that's something that we learned. That's something we learned. And like I said last week, they were they were just about all caught up. And then the criminals in D.C. decided to start acting up again. because They're worried that their power was slipping away. All right. If you are a new listener. And you should be a new listener, or maybe you're not a new listener, but yeah, I'm sure there's some of you out there, some of you out there on planet Earth. Maybe, maybe you are sitting uh, in a radio shack uh, in the uh, the principality of Sealand, and you're listening to the show. Well, if that's the case, listen louder, because Zach's going to tell you, or, you know, and let you know what you should do. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. true that is what you can do you can go to sotg shop sotg.com you get everything you need or you just go to the website or do whatever you want to do Uh, you can find all 1142 episodes of public radio there yeah it's pretty cool student of gun public radio it's pretty cool all right let's go ahead and just jump right on into our brown hills bullet points of the week So, uh, what what did John Dixon say? It, one more time, and I'm going to grab a butter knife and take hostages. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, if, good. if well, I go to, too. Uh, yeah, if you're, I hope you're out there doing well. And if anybody knows John Dixon, tell him that we, we hope that he's doing well. 
uh, I, if I go to a pub, one more public range and see an adult sitting behind, standing behind a rifle, shotgun, pistol with earmuffs on and their kids standing behind them with their hands o- over their ears waiting for the shot, I'm going to grab a butter knife and start taking hostages. <laughs> Jared and I were at a public range this weekend and we we're like, oh, let's check out the rifle range part. And so we slowly drove up there and Jared says, please tell me that those kids have ear protection. And they obviously they obviously my didn't. optimistic self was hoping that, that they did. They had ear protection, ear plugs in their ears, and they were also covering their ears with their hands. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. So there's dad laying on the ground, got his his super cool G.I. Joe whatever blaster rifle. He's got he's got cans on his head and the kids, the eight, nine, ten year old kids standing behind dad watching him. With. And, and then he's like, OK, and they cover their hands with their ears. You cheap mother lover. You cheap, thoughtless mother lover. And that's that is nowhere near the first time I've seen that. Yeah. Remember going to the 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 uh the trap was, ranges, the the, yeah. the public where they, they get out with the 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 hand thrower, you know, the one you buy at Walmart or or you know sportsman's outdoor outlet or whatever, and you know, a little spring the inexpensive spring one. And there that there's dad mom and who my uncle Jim or whatever the heck. They're going to throw these throw clays and there's a kid standing behind them with their hands over their ears. Really? Really? Is that is that the best we can do, America? Because if that's the best we're doing, then it's not good enough. I did my best. But a best guess my best wasn't good enough. No, your best wasn't good enough because if your kids are standing behind you, holding put it plugging their ears with their fingers or covering their ears with their hands because you didn't give them headphones and you're like oh no that earplugs in nope nope jared tell me why we don't give children earplugs because they don't know how to put them in because they well, actually don't know. hold on a second they have so the foamy ones that you squish kids will never get them in right however there are ones that you can just shove in your ear that have the like the plastic the hard plastic ones well, first of all, you don't put shove hard plastic in your ears ever, but um, well, it's the they're they're the hard plastic in the center with the soft plastic around yeah. the outside that actually creates a, a seal. But I'm but looking here's right the here deal. on com, and you can get youth and women's folding muffs for thirteen dollars. Oh, that's way too expensive. I can't. Uh, I can't. And, and it's a reputable brand. I I can't. I can't buy that. I can't go for that. No, thirteen no dollars to wow. save your kids' hearing, man. The reason you don't give your kids earplugs is because a, they're not going to put them in right, and even if you say, "Are your earplugs in?" they'll say, "Yeah," and they're not going to be in right. But if you put the muffs on the kid's head, the muffs pretty much put themselves on right. Yeah, you know, you can look at a kid, and unless there's gaps, you know, unless they're like this, or you know, like that, you know. If if you can't see any ear because any of your kids' ears because they're covered by the muffs, then they're probably on right. And while I'm at it, get some go to the hardware store or whatever. I think that Champion sells um Champion Outdoors. I think they sell the iPro in multi packs. Uh I, I'm pretty sure they do. If they don't, there's somebody who does. But the other thing, uh, you know, the ear pro is is one thing. But if your kids are standing, if you're laying on the ground shooting a rifle or a shotgun or whatever, and your kids don't have anything covering their eyes, you're a negligent mother lover. You you're just negligent. You can go to, and they don't have to be. Fan- you're like, I'm not gonna buy my kids fancy protector glasses because they'll, they'll ruin them. How much is it gonna cost you when your kid gets a a chunk of debris in their eyeball? 
uh, or their kid or your kid gets a, a their cornea is damaged. You're like, oh, like that. Well, when I shoot, I'm not like you. I shoot straight forward. Nothing ever. Like, you no, know, you're stop. Just, just stop yourself. The youth I've been, glasses. There's the wraparound sport shooting glasses. I'm on. I'm still on brownhouse.com. Yeah. There's the wraparound sport shooting glasses from the same brand as the earmuffs for three dollars and fifty nine cents. You can get women's slash youth shooting glasses for seven dollars and fifty nine cents. So for the low, low price of twenty dollars, you can get eyes and ears for your children. You can protect your children's hearing and their vision. Yeah, skip out on a cup of coffee for every day this week, and you'll have two sets of both of those things. Well, here's the thing: Uh, old dad laying there shooting his center fire blaster. He shot a hundred dollars with ammo. Yeah. So that I'm sorry to be on a soapbox, but. I, I can't I can't remain silent about it. this. And, and yeah, I can't remain silent about this crap. This that's crap. There, there is no excuse why people who will visit a public shooting range or a private shooting range or whatever, adult humans who've taken the time to purchase all the cool guns and blaster stuff have not taken the time to get iPro and ear pro for their kids. And you know what? If you teach your kids when they're seven, eight, nine, ten years old to do the right thing, then they'll grow up and do the right thing. That was the great thing about 4-H shooting sports kids is once that kid was a second year camper, the first year campers, you kind of had to keep an eye on. Right. And when we would go to the shooting education camps, the week long shooting education camp, first year campers, whether they were 12 or 14 or whatever, it's their first year. You got to keep an eye on them, make sure they got their I I. Your protection on they got their air protection on stuff but a second year camper you won't catch them without it as a matter of fact they'll, they'll be like and, and if and it, and instructors like like to flip their things up on their foreheads i don't know why they do that but the, the adults they flip their glasses up on their foreheads they'll be like mr jones your glasses are on your forehead oh, okay gotcha thanks very much thanks thanks John. Uh, put your ear pro on you know and, and Something that that is actually uh, you need to help people with uh, if the great thing about modern ear pro is the electronic muffs are great for hearing what's going on around you, being able to talk to people and what have you. And you don't feel like you're in a cave like with normal ones. But the problem is, is when if you do take them off, you're so used to being able to hear anything, everything anyway. When the bang bang starts, you you it's easy to forget that they're off um so that's why we look at each other we look left and we look right and we're like hey bro put your earmuffs on they're on top of your head oh thanks so yeah uh, that is my i am going to climb down off my soapbox uh, for now, but for this topic yeah other topic but if, if you're an adult out there and you haven't ta- and you can take your kids shooting which i think you should do because that's your right as an American. Sure. That's a, yeah. that's part of being an American is educating your children about the use, the proper, efficient, effective use of firearms. Take the time to get them the ear pro and the eye pro and teach them to do it. It's not that hard. And if you're not doing it, you're just being negligent and you're a rockhead. And I'm going to take a grab a butter knife and start taking hostages. <laughs> I've done you guys a service. I've put the links in the show notes for you so you can just go there. I There's one that says, get ear protection here. And the other one says, get eye protection here. Ooh. You can click those links. Look at you. Add that stuff to your cart. So in, it'll take you 30 seconds to add the stuff to your cart and check out. Yep. And then after you do that, you'll forget you did it and it'll show up at your house. You'll be like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Next time I go to the range with my kids, I've got the, the protection for them. That's right. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. And, and, yeah, there's no reason not to. All right, uh, now it's time for me to stop, uh, get off my soapbox, and let's act talk to you guys. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, 
that is something that you should be doing and we shouldn't have to prompt you but we're going to prompt you and uh uh <laughs> is that new well the picture was great talking about glare but so uh i know i just popped over to the discord to see if anybody was there is anybody there yes is anybody yep and if, by the way, if, if you are, thank you for joining us live. We yeah. appreciate it. And if you're listening right now and you're not li- uh, listening live, that is, if you're listening after the fact, you can listen live if you want at studentofthegun.com slash discord. Get into the discord and listen to us record the shows live because it's fun that way. There yes. are some things that you don't get to hear if you're not listening live. It's true. It's true. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on. And uh, we're going to move on to our student of the gun homeroom. Uh, uh, student of the gun homeroom is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. <laughs> oh, so uh, congratulations to the people of Indiana for getting your rhino piece of crap rhino governor to sign to actually put his name on a uh, on a constitutional carry bill isn't it crazy that we have to beg our masters at the state capitals to to acknowledge our constitutional rights please sir will you please recognize my inalienable rights please oh what inalienable rights i've never heard of them so that what what struck me was this this is listed under it's listed under uh news articles slash investigations and there this is what happens when you when you give when you allow people to become elitists, when they start working for the government and they become an elitist and they feel like they are above the peasantry, you know, it's like, well, I work for the government and you are a mere peasant. So the story, uh, Jared, Zach, you play the video. This hurts my brain. It hurts my brain. So get through the ad. And then let me know when you're ready. I will the title says state police preparing troopers for what they can and cannot ask with new gun law. <sighs> Wouldn't it be a lack of a gun law? I mean, what police will <sighs> still be able to intervene if they have probable cause a crime has occurred. What? Are we that stupid now? We are. We're a, literally a nation of imbeciles, and apparently we're hiring tyrant imbeciles, and we're giving them polyester uniforms and guns. Indiana State Police reports it's currently providing legal updates to make sure troopers know what to expect when the new constitutional carry law goes into effect. It's not really new. It's actually, like it goes back to, what, 1781? 1783. Will allow Hoosiers to carry a handgun without a license and limit what police officers can ask when they see a gun. That's I've got, I've got the video ready. Do you want to play the whole thing or is there like a timestamp I should start at? It's two minutes, 21 seconds. So we'll just play the whole thing and see what it says. All right, let's listen. What's Hold what? what? Let, me, let me finish this quote real quick. Okay. From ISP Superintendent Doug Carter it says, It's very limiting. It's very limiting in what we're going to be able to do. Well, isn't that the point? What the what is this imbecile talking about? What is very limiting? The Constitution, I guess. Uh, this is that, that's literally the purpose of the Constitution. Son of a bitch in constitutions. Yeah. It puts restrictions on the government. All right. Zach, you want to go ahead and play the video? Law went into effect today. Indiana's begins July 1st. Our 13 investigates reporter Sierra Putman tonight explains how Indiana State Police are now getting ready and preparing troopers for these changes. I cannot demand that you show me your handgun permit. 
Captain Ron Galavez says every Indiana State Police Trooper will see this PowerPoint on how constitutional carry will change Indiana gun laws. I cannot pat you down or anything of the sort just because you're displaying a firearm. The permitless carry law allows law-abiding citizens to carry a handgun without a license. It also prevents officers from asking questions to see if someone's legally allowed to carry. It's complicated. So ISP's legal team is going across the state to train and answer trooper questions. We just started last week, so everybody will definitely have gone through it here by the end of the month. State police is also showing what it compiled with other departments. Again, the law is complicated. State police superintendent Doug Carter told lawmakers he was against it. One of his concerns, officers won't be able to tell a good guy with a gun from a bad guy. I'm going to start from the front line. If they, if they release an individual um, with a handgun, with a notion that there's something there, I just don't know what it is, that, that, whatever that might be, and something bad happens within the next two hours, whose fault is it going to be? Any weapons in the vehicle, sir? Officers won't be able to ask questions or check someone's criminal background just because they have a gun. Can you do a criminal background check if someone was just speeding? No. No. Cannot. Police can only check someone's background if they have probable cause or think a crime is happening. Like possession of, uh, it could be marijuana, meth, narcotics, which is fairly common. If you're going to take a gun from somebody, you have to be darn good and sure that you, it's the right thing for you to do. Carter says ISP is working on a hotline to help officers double check those decisions in the field. Now there is a list of people who are prohibited from carrying a firearm, even with this new law. Some of those people include convicted felons, someone who was convicted of even a misdemeanor domestic violence charge, and people dishonorably discharged from the military. We'll have a full list on our website, WTHR.com. That was the longest two minutes and 21 seconds of my life. Oh my. Okay, that's, that's not Lord. true, but it was very long. It was long. So so I, I I went ahead and mapped it out. So it's it's actually only been it's only this new law has only been in place for two hundred and thirty one years. You see, for two hundred and thirty one years, the citizens of the United States of America have not required a permission slip from the government to carry a gun. Uh, but during that 231 years, the elitist, the scumbags, the the uh, ruling class, people who believe that they're better than the citizen, have decided that they know better. Um, wow. It's really complicated. It's it's just so complicated. How? So the how is it complicated? One thing that was very concerning for me was that the superintendent wanted he wants his officers the the troopers to be able to predict the future mm. which is impossible well 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 i don't know what if someone's in the middle of committing let's say a mass murder and you decide to just stand out in the parking lot and let them finish that wouldn't happen maybe what about that there officer jimmy what it is a, it is amazing to me that in the year, that in the this month that in June of 2022 that a police officer could go in front of a camera and say you just don't know how hard it is what to stand in the parking lot while children are slaughtered to arrest parents for trying to rescue their kids but that wasn't that was Texas that wasn't Indiana it's totally a different thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. And uh, I'm going to break some hearts here, but I am a heartbreaker, and I've been one for a long time. The, the law enforcement that we have today is the law enforcement that we deserve. What? What do you mean? As a nation... We've been weak, spineless, feckless. We've allowed the leftist to destroy our institutions. We sat silently and quietly, afraid to speak up. Well, I know that political correctness is wrong, but if I speak up, 
then they'll call me a racist, bigot, homophobe, sexist. And I don't want strangers to call me names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to destroy our institutions. You know who wouldn't have stood out in the parking lot and let children be slaughtered while they arrested the children's parents? Police officers who were cops when I was coming into it. You see, back in the day, and I'm going to do this because I've got the seasoning behind me here. I'm a seasoned guy. Uh, Back in the day, cops were rough. They were mean. They told dirty jokes and offensive jokes. They smoked cigarettes. They drank black coffee. When they're off duty, they drank booze. But you know what they wouldn't do? They wouldn't run away from the sound of gunfire. They weren't there. They they were there because they wanted to be a cop. They weren't there for the good cushy bennies, for the insurance and the 401k and for the 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 the, the paid time off. And what happened in the 90s? I'll tell you what happened in the 90s. We allowed this scumbag piece of human filth named William Jefferson Blythe Clinton to become the president of the United States, and he drug his harpy criminal wife along with him. And they ushered in an era of political correctness. And they started forcing, because you see what happened was uh, your local agencies started taking money from the federal government. You're like, why would a local police department be taking federal government money? Because the feds offered it to them. And we'd be stupid not to take it. Because, But money doesn't come free. There are always strings attached. And so what the feds started doing is they started giving grants to local little seven, eight, ten-man agencies. And the 10 man agencies who didn't have a lot of money are like, oh, I'd be stupid. Where we'd be stupid not to take that money. So they started taking it. And then the, the Justice Department, that's a joke, stepped in. They're like, oh, like Columbo. They turned around. They're like, oh, and by the way, here's some hiring regulations for you. And, they, and the guy's like, no, I, we're autonomous. We're in our own state, in our own city, 10th Amendment, go fornicate yourself. They said, "Uh uh-huh, but you like that sweet, sweet tax money, don't you? If you want to keep getting that sweet, sweet tax money, this is what you have to do. We want to know how many black, Latino, female, vagina carrying, uh, whatever office plant humping transsexual aliens you have on your department because we decided that if you have X number of people, you have to have Y number of fill in the blank. Now, if you're a sheriff or a chief, you're like, yeah, but I just hire the most qualified people. No, no. Hiring the most qualified people is so old school. It's so antiquated. Don't you know that hiring people with vaginas and lots of melatonin makes them qualified? You know, how does what? I'm saying, what? So the destruction of our law enforcement agencies started in the 1990s. I was there. I witnessed it. And today, what we have is two types of people. We have the pensioners who are like, uh, I, it's a government job, and whatever I have to do to keep this good, cushy you know, government job, I'll do it. If they say go to your house and at 3 a.m., smash your door and take all your guns because you posted a mean tweet, uh, if you said something mean on Twitter and your neighbor didn't like it, then that's what I'm going to do because they told me to, and I don't want to lose my good, cushy job. Then you have then you have the hardcore elitists who believe 
now that they work for the government and they have a badge and they have a polyester uniform that makes them better than you you see they get to carry guns because they work for the government you peasants shouldn't be carrying them and let me tell you why you peasants shouldn't be carrying them that is the state of the union and america it's your fault because when you should have spoken up you remained silent sorry to break the bad news to you comments questions concerns bleep 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 i think that that's uh i don't know how much to add because i was never a cop so i can't mm. say much um i think that we should uh move on to the next topic though we've got let's do stock it. market talk here which is interesting stuff. We don't have any bump music. I was like, I was waiting for Zach to play the bump music. <laughs> the I bad news doesn't exist. That while you're being distracted by gun hysterics, while they're putting on a show for you, because apparently we're we're right back to bread and circuses. The the peasants, uh, Rome is crumbling, but we built this really cool stadium, and if you go there then the, the the emperor will give you bread and you can watch games and forget all about this destruction of the economy and how the huns are at the gate and that. don't worry about all that stuff don't worry about it so we're we're right there we're right there with them we're we're being distracted they're they're putting on a show for us they're throwing public temper tantrums they've decided that the constitution doesn't mean anything it's just in their way. They're going to just pretend it doesn't exist or it doesn't apply in this situation because they decided it doesn't apply. So while that's going on, Friday was bad. Go ahead and hit the Friday story. Well, the first Friday story we've got says stock market sees worst week since January after gas hits $5. Inflation reaches new high. In a week marked by gas prices surpassing $5 per gallon and inflation reaching new highs, the stock market saw its worst returns since January. That after was Friday. Dust, yeah. After the dust settled, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had fallen 2.73%. The NASDAQ had fallen 3.52%. And the S&P 500 had fallen 2.91%. On Thursday morning, GasBuddy announced the national average of gas, uh, the national average price of gasoline. Hit five dollars per gallon. Days earlier, gas prices were four eighty two per gallon, more than double the two thirty nine average when President Joe Biden entered the over office at the beginning of the last year. So this yeah. is one point five years. Roughly. In one and a half years, we have a one hundred percent increase across and the board nationwide. Then on Friday, a report from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics revealed that the Consumer Price Index rose eight point six percent between May 21, 2021 and May 2022, meaning that inflation hit a new four-decade record high once again. Four decades. The uh, It's just new, transitory. It's yeah. good for the... Inflation's good for the economy. Don't you know that? The new figure surged past the Dow Jones estimate of 8.3% year-over-year inflation. Biden attributed the ugly report to Putin's price hike. He also pinned the blame on purported corporate price gouging and wealthy Americans failing to pay higher taxes. Yeah, oh, I, I can't stand that. I, I can't stand that. So that was Friday. You got to blame. So so Friday that 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 went down on Friday. They were they were holding their hearings and they were throwing their public temper tantrums all over Washington, the House, the Senate. There, the, they sent Sniffy Joe out with a teleprompter. They're like, "Say to it, say Joe, we'll give you ice cream if you go say this to the people." Oh, 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 okay, <laughs> okay, uh, I'll do that. So he goes out and he's like. Uh, no amendment is absolute. And uh, I, I saw a killer may may. That's it. It said, oh, no amendment is absolute. So that means we no longer have to pay federal income tax. Because, well, you, you know, that the only reason the federal government thinks it is is owed your money is because of an amendment 
to the Constitution because the original Constitution gave them no authority to take your money. So if it were not for a an amendment, Amendment 16, they couldn't do that. So when Sniffy Joe, the mongoloid meat puppet, goes up and says, there, there's, there's no amendment that's absolute. Every amendment is subject to change. And it's like, so can my state legislature, can the legislators in my state say, you know what? The citizens of Wyoming are no longer required to give their money to the federal government. End of story. We just we went into the room, we voted, boom. Because Joe just said that the states that that the people who won a popularity contest in their state are allowed to alter, amend, and ignore the Constitution, right? Well, not for that. No, no. You see, yesterday Colorado voted uh, reinstates uh, reinstitute slavery. They can't do that. You said that no amendment is absolute. Montana voted yesterday to forbid women from voting. You can't do that. They're, they're, they're the constitutional amendment. Sorry. You don't get it both ways. So on Friday, while uh, they were throwing public temper tantrums and hissy fits uh, on Washington, D.C., while they were trying to distract you you know, that if you don't let us take your guns, everyone in the world is going to die. Is that kind of like if you don't take the shot and wear the mask, everyone in the world's going to die? So that was Friday. And you guys all went out on Saturday and Sunday and you you enjoyed your weekend. Hopefully you enjoyed your weekend and you had, a, you know, whatever um, cocktails or you went to the beach or you mowed the lawn or whatever. So then what comes to like, well, Friday was bad, but Monday will be better. I mean, the weekend, everything will calm down over the weekend. And then on Monday, everything's going to be hunky dory again. Right, Jared? Yes, absolutely. Well, let's go to the Monday story real quick. So, for those of you that are uh, that heard what dad said and said something about the taxation is in the Constitution. Um, it is, but he's it's said, an amendment. No, 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 no. Taxation is not an amendment. It's in article one section two but it's not to the federal government like he said earlier it's it was a portion to the states mm -hmm. it says representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union according to their respective numbers which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of blah 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 and continues there so i just wanted to look that up and read it for you guys okay but jared you understand that there was no federal income tax until the passage of the 16th amendment yes that's okay. exactly what i was just saying okay for those of you all right the, the people that have the question so let's go to monday's show or monday's show yeah let's go to monday's uh so friday was bad but certainly everything will be better yes. on monday monday's news is bloodbath on wall street as stock market plunges into bear territory for those of you that's there's bulls and there's bears Bull is good. Bear is bad. Yeah. Uh, stand by a second. I'm not able to. I'm logged in and I just had this up a second ago. And now it's locking me out. So I'm unable to read. What? What, what? what happened here? I had the same thing. I had the story and now it says uh, you must sign in to read this story. Yeah. Well, I am signed in. And I have the membership, but it's not letting me read it. So I guess there goes that idea. Well, here's I the deal. Read, here, I can read uh, 2.5 paragraphs, which is zero information. A plethora of poor economic news caused a massive stock market sell-off on Monday morning. Within an hour and a half of trading, the Dow Jones industrial average fell over 2.5%. Two, two so that's 2.5 plus, I think, 2. two plus Fridays. Three. Yeah. On Friday. S&P fell over 3.5% and the NASDAQ fell nearly 4%. Markets around the world tumbled as higher than expected inflation and lower than expected economic growth up in the outlook for interest rates. And I also think that uh, I remember seeing in the story that they had, uh, I think the Federal Reserve had mentioned something about a 0.75% um, 
is on the table. Yes, yeah, they said a five percent interest rate is on the table. Yeah, they said it's on, on Friday. The table. There was that was suspected by quote unquote experts to be on the table, but it hadn't been confirmed yet. I believe that was confirmed on Monday. Point yep. seven five percent interest so, rate in what? Yeah, in the in in, in the uh, the money that the Federal Reserve Bank charges the government to loan, they charge the government to loan the money. So that was let's see. Uh, I believe it was a quarter of a percent was the first increase. A half a percent was the second increase. So, and those was in like March and, and May or, or mm-hmm. somewhere around that. It was both, both of them were this year. And so that's 0.75% plus well, it's what, this it's, new it's, one that's on the table. That's, so that's potentially one and a half percent rate increase. So that's what the banks charge other, the, the banks to use their money. So if you want to go get a mortgage or whatever, the, the, yeah. the cost of loaning, the cost of borrowing money is going up. Yeah. Uh, so it, to, to be fair, to be fair, play the other side of the fence. The interest rates were at an all time historic low and they weren't going to stay that way forever. So um, going up is, is probably normal and it was expected to happen in the first place. But However, it's usually like, a small a half a percentage per year or you know it, it's not supposed to go up and down like a roller coaster right and and that's 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 the point that i was getting to was it was at an all-time historic low at so i think it was like three percent or something which is crazy low and so with three plus one and a half is four and a half percent uh I, th- I believe it was in the early 1900s or or don't quote me on that timeline, but sometime in the last century, interest rates were eighteen percent. So, in in if you look at the like when highs and historic lows, we're still like we're still on the low or... end, right? But we have to look at um, the the rate of increase. So, how fast is a hockey sticking now versus how fast did a hockey stick in the past? Well, there I, I found an article that you can read. Uh, and it's it's entitled Crypto Bloodbath, what that means yeah. for the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. My Bitcoin went down a lot. Yeah. Here's what the you, crypto you bloodbath here. means for the stock market, and it's not good. It. This is Monday's uh, Wall Street bloodbath. I need to preface this. Um, the genie has been let out of the bottle with cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. So um, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it does matter what cryptocurrency is the leader and and whatnot but it's also important to know like from from our perspective in the audience here that the genie's been let out of the bottle that this thing is possible and now we have another option that is not just general fiat so the genie's been let out of the bottle and i don't know if that's lending to people trying to destroy the cryptocurrency market so that it can lead to a a digital bank currency or whatever a centralized cause is there yeah centralized currency Whatever the cause is there, we know for a fact that there are a bunch of different groups of people that can use their own currency to trade inside their own group. Doesn't You don't have to have one centralized currency anymore. So as long as we have that baseline knowledge and we keep that moving forward, the different things can ebb and flow and, and whatever. As long as this whole de- the decentralized finance, decentralized digital currency doesn't go away. And something, you know, people are out there, they're like, oh, come on, man. It's like three percentage points. What is that? Three points is nothing. Yeah. Wait, okay. You want to buy a $487,000 house? Three points on $487,000 is how much? A lot. Standard commission? It, it's about it, 15 grand. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, I know. So, and, and, and if you go to the Forbes article, it also talks about, and it goes to the last paragraph. It says, derp, 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 recently predicted the central bank will be forced to raise rates 0.75 at the next, at their next upcoming meeting, at the upcoming meeting. So, and and here's the the predictors. This is what they do when they, when they let it, right, when they let it out, when they tell the financial times, you know, when they, when they send a little bleep to the financial times whether it's new york times or forbes or whatever when they say ah we're thinking about that they know that they're going to report it they know that you're going to find out about it so that when they do it 
You're not like, where'd this come from? They can say, we're already, where is, what are you talking about? We already said we were going to do it. So calm down. They, they don't, they don't, you say, well, no, they, then nobody knew it was a super secret. And, and one of the super secret spy journalists found it out. And no, <laughs> they were, the journalists were given this information. They told them, they're like, this is what you're going to tell the peasants. Go write a story and tell the peasants we're going to raise the rate. So that when we do raise the rate, we can say, you already knew it was going to happen, so shut up. It was going to happen. Quit crying. So now what, what we've all had this conversation. We say, so if gasoline is unarguably, you cannot argue. I don't care if you're a die in the wool Biden supporter. If you are, I don't know what the F you're doing here. Uh, when the price of energy, that's the energy that you use to fuel your, your gas tank, when it goes up 100, actually more than, because you're like, well, it doubled. Yeah, that's a greater than 100%. It's more than doubled. That means it's gone up more than 100%. The price of fuel that goes into your car in 15 months increased over 100%. The price of diesel fuel has gone up 100%. You're like, I don't have a diesel truck. I don't care how much it costs for diesel. Anyone who said, if you say that, go find a, a, a tall building and go for a short walk. Okay. Go do take a long walk off a short pier. The, the average, the average, uh, electric bill now is up 35 to 40 percent food costs are up 35 percent how can they print stories well inflation looks like it's about eight percent how do you factor inflation when the things that everyone has to buy you know i don't have to buy a new refrigerator this this month Everybody doesn't have to buy major appliances. Everybody doesn't have to buy cars, right? And not everybody's buying houses. Only a small percentage of people are actually buying houses, you know, selling, buying houses every year. But you know what everyone does every day, every week? They go to the grocery store. They pay an electric bill. And some people pay electric bill, gas bill, whatever, they pay they're buying fuel for their cars this is something you can't get around it's not like well if you don't like the cost of it just don't buy it i guess you just won't buy it then if you don't like the cost then no and it wasn't just going to happen the criminals in washington dc made this happen by their criminal behavior now, here's the good news. Are you ready for the good news? I'm ready to tell you if you're ready to hear it. The good news is, despite the fact that Washington, that your country is being run by criminals. And, and if you want to argue with me about that, you go ahead, but you, you, you're going to fail. The country is being run by criminals. Criminals that view their position in Washington, D.C. as a way to put money into their own pockets and the pockets of their buddies. And you can just go fornicate yourself. And if they have to send the news media out to distract you with gun control hysterics, then that's what they'll do. And that's what they've been doing. As the economy is collapsing in the United States, and people are having to decide, well, we're not going to be doing this because I can't, we can't afford $200 in gasoline. So sorry, kids, not going to happen. People are having, they're like, well, we used to have this thing called disposable income for entertainment and what have you. Now that's going to the gas bill, electric bill, food bill, gasoline bill. When I say gas, I mean natural gas, which is evil and no one should ever use it. 
You know, if you if you could get rid of your natural gas and electric, if you just plunk down, you know, write a check for fifty thousand dollars for uh, solar panels. Do that tomorrow. Like I can't I can't afford to pay for what I have now. You want me to buy a Tesla, too? Yeah. If you just go buy a Tesla and solar panels and, you know, you, you do that, then you wouldn't need any of that. And. Well, how do we deal with the price of food? Well, food just comes from a grocery store. You should just eat. You should eat uh, uh, impossible burgers. And I can't believe it's not meat because it's not. But actually, impossible burgers and the, 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 the vegan food, the vegan food actually has an idiot tax added to it. We went to a restaurant this weekend and, and they had hamburgers on the menu. You're like, you can substitute an idiot patty for an extra dollar. And we all were, we were all day. We're like, you're telling me that that like seaweed, kale, like mold mix that they used, that they colored, would put brown food coloring and seasoning in. And they're calling it a patty. You're telling me that that costs a dollar more than genuine U.S. prime beef? No, it doesn't. All the all the, the I'm being I'm trying to be I did, I almost said it. All the stuff that they make that out of, they scrape that crap off of the floor of the warehouse. No, they don't. Whatever. So that I mean even that has an idiot tax attached to it. But here's the good news. Even though that the criminals in DC are are dead set on destroying the economy and enslaving you, you you can do something about it. You can actually choose not to participate in their nonsense. Now, if you're just if you're just starting down that path, you're a little bit late to the game, but you still can. We've been, have we not been preaching into this microphone? Have we not been preaching self-sufficiency in this microphone for a long time? Literally years. Yeah, a long time. Literally years. We've been preaching self-sufficiency. I've written books about community preparedness. You know, not so long ago, we used to have these things. We used to have every town, you know, now a farmer's market has become this like gentrified hipster thing, right? Where you go to overpay for organic vegetables. It didn't where, used to where be. Where is that? It didn't used to be uh, in gentrified towns like, you know, New York and Chicago and places oh. like that. It didn't used to be like it used to be what you had was you had a you had the county, whatever the you know, the pavilion or the, the city pavilion or, or whatever. And the, the second Saturday of every month, people would show up with tape folding tables and and they bring beets and they bring carrots and they bring cucumbers and they bring you know, whatever they bring honey, jars of honey and blah, 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 blah. And it you when my mom was like, we're going to the farmer's market, we went there because it was a good deal. Yeah. Our farmers Wait. markets here in the valley, every single one that I've been to is a great deal. Yeah. Some some of the stuff, like some of the meat is a little more, more pricey than the store meat. Yeah. But most of the stuff is a way better deal. And you get to meet the people that are actually producing the food, picking the food, and and talk to them about their process. Yeah. yeah. So you say, Well, how does that help me? Well, what I'm trying to tell you, hippie, is that we as a community as communities as american communities we used to operate as american communities that used that was standard and then as time went by we're like well we don't need to do that anymore because we have we have boop 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 you we have walmarts and upc scanning and and we can get disposable products made in china and you know and I'll never forget going into the Biloxi Walmart. They're like, okay, Biloxi, what? Ohio? No, Biloxi, Mississippi, retard. And you know what they do? One of the 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 one of the top three occupations or industries in Biloxi 
what is it, Jared? Uh, shrimping. Ha- shrimping. It has to do with boats, right? They go out there and they shrimp. If you ever watch Forrest Gump, go watch it. So that you he literally some go yeah, to some shrimp. Go to, so you go down. You could go down on the docks and on certain days, and they would you could buy buckets of shrimp, right? So go into Walmart in Biloxi, Mississippi, where they like the shrimping capital of the South, and they're like, "No, it's not. It's buy util battery. Shut your whore mouth." Okay, sorry, Alabama, but um, what what does Walmart have in their freezer section? Bags of frozen shrimp from the Philippines. So someone thought, you know what would be the best economic model? Let's get shrimp from the other side of the planet and ship it to this store on the on the Gulf Coast where they actually make the shrimp, where they catch the shrimp. It's that kind of idiocy. You know, I got just one example, and it is only just one example, but it's that kind of idiocy. That would be like that'd be like being in Florida and going into the grocery store and picking up a bag of oranges that says grown in Manila, you know, grown and harvested in in the, the Tecavi province of Mexico. It's like, yeah, but it's Florida. Don't we have orange orchards? Yeah, we, you know, we don't need those. It's that kind of idiocy. You don't need to participate in that. You need to take a good hard look at what's really important in your life and just and say, what do I actually need and how am I going to make sure that my family has that? No, you can't drill a well and you can't get oil. Well, maybe you can. If you're in Texas, you're like, screw you. I got an oil well on my property, buddy. Uh, yeah, but you can't pour oil into your engine. You got to turn it into gasoline. You just get water from the well, put it in the engine. It'll be fine. Just throw a, yeah, dump, dump a bottle of Coca-Cola in your gas tank and everything will be fine. Uh, but seriously, things that you need, you need to start working with your community. I've written books about it. Nicholas Orr's written What's, books about what it. What is one, what is the top um, the top way that you recommend to reach out to your, to the listeners, local community, how, if I'm a listener, listen to you right now mm-hmm. and I am sold and I don't think that this is it's fake news. Okay. And I want to do what you're saying. What's the number one way that you recommend getting my community together? Mm. Well, the way we used to do it was that we had these buildings called churches and faithful people went into those churches and they they helped each other on purpose. Uh, they didn't, you know, just go in there to show off their new clothes or um, listen to the uh, the minion of Satan talk about how uh, you know whatever is okay and whatever immorality. Okay, but the question was, okay. what, what's the number one way that you? Yeah, I'm on? getting to that. Don't cut me off. The point is, we have churches, we have communal organizations, and it may be difficult. I know that, you know, fraternal organizations, when I was, you know, here you go again when you were a kid. Yeah, when I was a kid, this country is a good country. We had fraternal organizations. What is a fraternal organization? Most people are like, I don't even know what the hell that is. You know, you had the, the, you had, you had the Eagles, you had the, the, the veterans of foreign wars and so on and so forth that actually would get together as people, not, not on their phones, like actually face to face, look at each other. You know what? If if nothing else, if you live in a a, a community, a cul de sac community, or whatever, uh, you can do what Jared's neighbors. Did. You know the Mormons say what you want about the Mormons, but they got a good playbook for a community organization, don't they, Jared? Yes. Yeah, the Mormons have a good playbook for community organization. Uh, from the that's one of the you know, one of the the uh, the pros of the LDS Church is they have had as their one of their pillars for well since the founding self sufficiency you know family sufficiency leading to community sufficiency leading to city leading to state and so on and so forth they start small you know what we did we we created the Patriot Fire Team model I said you and four of your close friends. 
get together, have a barbecue, and talk about it. Say, I, I pledge, we all pledged that in, in an emergency, crisis, whatever, we will help and support each other. You know, you 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 lose your job and 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 times are tough. The re- the three the rest of us will come together and help you, so on and so forth. You know, you're in the hospital. We'll come check on your house. You know, whatever. Yes. So you, you can start listener, small. You as a listener, you are the leader of your community. That's just the way it is. And so you, even if you don't want it, that's just the way it is. You're gonna have to deal with it. You're gonna have to accept that title, and you're gonna have to move forward knowing that. And I can tell you something that we just did in our neighborhood that worked really well, uh, actually better than I thought it was going to, was we pulled a grill out in the front. And this wasn't done at my place. It was done a couple houses down the street. But pulled a grill out in the front of the driveway, set up a couple pop-up tents, and we uh, uh, the flyers were given around the neighborhood that said, hey, on this day at this time, it was an hour and a half, 6 to 7.30, we're going to be, it was this Friday at 6 to 7.30, we're going to be doing a community barbecue. We'll have the grill. We'll have the plates. We'll have all the utensils you need. Just bring something to put on the grill and drinks if you want to. And and then come over here. We'll have the grill for you. You could cook your food. We could cook your food. The food will get cooked somehow. We'll eat the food together. It'll be great. We'll meet our neighbors and talk about stuff. And the turnout was fantastic. So I recommend doing that. Set up the grill. If you got one, pull it outside. If you don't got one, go buy one, then pull it outside turn it on, get it warm and invite people over. Yeah. I, I wish I could tell you that this is transitory, that everything going to be all right. Um, but well, here's the thing. I, I would be lying to you if I said that the, that the criminals in, in government are not that they're going to try. If, if you look around everything that's happening, that should be the top priority. For anybody who's an elected official, the the problems, the, top priority. The, the the food problems, the the okay. What do we we talk? What do we talk about this weekend? Fifty seven accidents at food production facilities when the normal industrial accident rate is two per year. I think it was nineteen accidents and two per year. Is that it's more than that? Seventeen more. No, in the in in the last in the last eighteen months. There's been over 50. Yeah, but none of that actually matters because there is no downside to knowing your community and being able to be self-sufficient. There's no downside at all. It doesn't matter if things are perfect forever. Being self-sufficient, knowing your community and knowing your neighbors is always going to be always a good thing. So you don't have to operate with a fear-based mindset of things are going to collapse. Oh, no. Just do the thing. Think of the positive actions that you can take every single day to know your community and be self-sufficient. It's never going to be a bad thing. Yeah, we've said that before here. Self-sufficiency is never a bad idea. We just don't do it because we've been convinced somehow uh, that we that it's not our responsibility or that we shouldn't or that's what crazy people do. Or we Most humans take the easy route, and it's and everybody does that take the easy route until you you see something coming that it's like oh man now i have to actually do the thing that takes more effort that's just the human condition there are a few select people that there are farmers and they've got the experience and they've already got the infrastructure set up or whatever and they've been doing this for a long long time and we have those people in our audience so i i urge you if you're a listener that hasn't even started down this path yet jump into the discord. We've got a home setting channel. There are people in there with great information. Tap into the, the information that they've got. They're there for you. They're talking in the home setting channel. If you need the information, it's free. Go get it. Studentthegun.com slash discord. There's no reason not to. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we as a community, we as a country used to be strong. We used to be independent. We used to have good communities. And to say that, you well, that the United States depends on other people for stuff. I don't believe it. Yeah. We, we, we used to people. Everyone used to look to us to set the example. And that's not the case anymore. Uh, it, it really isn't. And, and if, if the United States of America goes, that's it. There's nowhere else to go. You know, I don't you know, you, can, you might pick a place. Oh, I know you can go to the iron shore. 
you do that, but right, Zach? Yes, indeed, you could. You take a boat to the Iron Shore and cross the is ice. Is that where the Iron Sheik is? Yep. Yep. Uh, so the good news is, here's the good news. The good news is, uh, and, and the great news is, our founders knew this was this day would come. You know, they, they try, are, 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 there are people in the media that try, and, that try and poison the memory of our founders. They try and poison the founding of this country, but it's all a lie. They knew. They knew that men in power were always going to seek more power. And they knew that the more power men got, the more corrupt that they would become. That's why they put limits on them. That's why we all agreed to those limits. So we do have a framework. It's out there. We just have to apply it. We've got to follow it. And uh, whether you start today or tomorrow, I'm telling you the, the, the road to as self-sufficient or community sufficient as you can get, that is what you need to be doing. And if you choose not to, well, you are an American and you can choose not to. And uh, that is totally up to you. Um, I'm going to give you something that you can implement right now in your daily life. Every time you see something on the internet or, or you hear something from somebody in person that is something that can, that concerns you that's going on in the world. Your task is to find one positive thing that you can do to counteract that and implement it in your daily life. So if you see something that pops up on your newsfeed or comes from the, the water cooler at work, and you hear somebody talking about something, it's like, oh no, inflation is blah, 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 and gas prices are X, and it's gonna cost us $200 this week to drive back and forth to work. Like, okay, well, what, that, that's, that's information that you've taken in. So either you can be depressed with that information or you can say, okay, what can I do in my daily life to offset that thing that stresses me out? You that can learn how to drive a semi-tractor. Yeah, but then you gotta pay for the diesel fuel. No, you you just jack that mother. <laughs> and you got. You know. <laughs> I've been so, babying this drink because no, 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 no. I didn't want to run out while we we're at the show. But I think oh, I I've, I've been out of my mind for a while. Yeah, I've been babying this. I know people are watching from the beginning to the end. They're like, <sighs> is he gonna, the you gonna make love to that thing, or are you gonna drink it? Oh man, I tell you what. But uh, oh, last thing. And I'm going to let you go. Oh, I, I just finished my drink. No, last thing. You, go out and buy a paper map. Me? No, you, listening to me. Not me, though. No, well, you, you already did. We already did that. What? Jared and I, had, we had an experience this weekend where we walked into a store and we asked this nice 20-something girl. Yeah, excuse me. We Wait, hold on a map. second. Hold on a second. You tell your story in just a second. But I just have a question for you. Why do we need a paper map when we have Onyx? I don't get yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know. You got it on your phone. There's an offline mode. So yeah, it's, it's right there. It'll never not be there. It's right okay, there. Now you have to close the loop with the story. No, we went to uh, we we went into a sporting goods store uh, that sells hunting supplies and so forth. And uh, I was looking for a public lands map. And at first, I I I asked the girl at the information counter, "Where can I? I've never been in the store. Where can I find a map of the public lands map?" And she was just like. I don't know. She's like, I know does what she, public lands are, but what's a map? She, so she got her on her thing, and she's like, do we sell maps? And, and an older person at the other end of the radio said, yes, we do have maps. Oh, where are they? And so we went to the area where the maps were, and the and we figured out which map we needed for our geographic location where we currently were standing. Poof. And and there were none. They were that gone. that little pigeonhole area that was empty. And so the guy came over. He's like, "Can I help you guys?" Because he saw us by the map area, and he's like, he, "No one." I don't know. Goes Can there. you help us? I don't know. And we're like, "Yeah, we need." You know, and he's he's like, "No, why don't you, you just put Onyx on your phone and you just just like I, I understand. I have that. that. I, I I want a paper map though. I have that. I also want a paper map." And so I said to the guy, I said, well, that the one we need is out. How often do they restock the maps? And he's like, almost never. 
<laughs> He's like, almost never. Probably why they're out. Okay. So, but we endeavored to persevere. Yeah. And we, we and we found an agency of government that was actually worth a dig gum. Yep. We went to the U.S. Forest Service office. They had we walked exactly in there. what we needed. They actually had multiple of what we needed. Yes. And I said to the young lady behind the counter, I would like a, a map with the public lands. And she's like, oh, we've got a couple. I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Jared actually recently had, we've been recommending that you guys, if you need a map of your area of operation or your, your area of responsibility, um, to go to mytopo.com. And apparently, I, I was unaware of this because I got my topo map a long time ago. Uh, Jared went to get one, and they have altered and changed the process. So give them a... Did you get yours yet? No, it's uh, I paid for it, and it, they said they would ship it within 24 hours. But I don't. Well, maybe it's in my mailbox. Might be in it, my mailbox. It probably in your mailbox. Yeah. However, um, so this is what happened. Let me tell you. I went to mytopo.com, and I clicked on the thing where you can make your own custom map. I've done this before, where you find your area, you, you choose satellite or top topographical or whatever option you want. You confirm your area, you go through the checkout process, you check out and you're done within like 10 to 15 minutes if you know what you're looking for. Right. I, so I went to do that again and I realized, oh, there you can't do that anymore because um, and, and what they're doing now is you have to jump on a video call while one of their team members builds your map for you. Uh, and it turns out it's really difficult to do so because you can't draw, draw on the screen in the video call and show them exactly yeah. where you want the center of the map. You have to be like, do you see those words? Yeah, those words right there go there. And it's like, it, it's, it's difficult. But we got everything done in 15 minutes and the, the map is ordered. So it's about the same time investment. Um, but I'm one of those DIY guys that likes to be able to do the thing. Well, what I learned while I was on the call, I said, why, why are you guys doing this? It seems like going backwards, requiring a video call with a human instead of being able to just do the map myself. And it turns out that they're actually upgrading their system so that it works with touchscreen devices because before you couldn't do the map on an iPad or a phone or whatever, you had to go to the computer to do it. And I guess enough people complained and said, hey, I have this touchscreen device. I want to build my map on the touchscreen device. So they said, okay, but we're going to have to shut off the old system for a little bit and have our team members build while we're building this new system. So that's what's happening. Yeah. So... So what I'm telling you freaks and freakazoids is this uh, before you you can't do it, like don't wait until you know, you're like that, like, well, if, if I ever absolutely get into a crisis situation where my phone doesn't work and then and then then I'll get a map. No, get one now. Get a map of your area of responsibility of your AOR. Get it now. Don't wait. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> do you understand? And if you do, great. There you go. That is my advice to you. That is my advice to you today. Thanks. And uh, we, we had that experience this week. We, we experienced and You know, it didn't used to be that way in America. You used to be able to just walk into any gas station in America and, and buy a map. Pick a map. And, you know, map of the local you know, streets and checked. everything. and. And Where? I'm just thinking this now. We should have went to one of the Maverick gas stations because they they advertise themselves as Adventure's first stop. Mm. So theoretically, they should have maps there. They should. They should. But I, well, I, I you know next time we're there, we'll it. pop in. Yeah, we'll pop they have everything else. They have the drinks so. that I like. They have delis. They have hot food. They have people be not, we're people on the east coast maverick, be like what you be talking about yeah if somebody from maverick is listening and you'd like to sponsor student event because we like you guys and we rots a rock story, with that let me know yeah all right freaks and freak is it free cats oh uh, info let me see the gun.com yeah soon the gun.com um what is coming up what do we have in the in in the the larder uh, my bedtime has come up it, it has come and passed Mm -hmm. your That's babies are the babies asleep oh i, oh, know. I got one, one of your, your babies house. yeah your grandma's got one of the babies i don't know did you uh, did you take my child home with you oh yeah she made it here so okay oh we got uh it's what have we kid. got uh elon musk uh, forcing twitter 
to uh, release data on fake accounts. That's cool. Hey. Uh, there's a new thing that's happening, and this is the second. Actually, I saw a story today that popped up. Sudden, it's called Sudden S Sads. It you know what SIDS sad. is? SIDS yeah. is Sudden Infant. Well, they've come up with a new one. It's Sudden Adult Death Syndrome. Uh, normally, young and healthy people are just dropping dead for no reason and they can't figure out why uh we've got a a uh, um preschool teacher who is very upset that parents would question her uh her woke ideology and and try and stop her from i think uh, Zach's in his dorm room indoctrinating their children so that'll be fun uh and uh Oh, well, we got some good stuff coming up for you guys. Oh, and some gym etiquette 101. We got some gym etiquette for you guys. So we got that. Uh, Zach, did you want to pop in and, and uh, let everyone see your face or was that an accident? Oh, no. The, uh, the cat was behind me, like standing up on the chair, like looking over my shoulder. And of course, by the time I turned the camera on, she was gone. Oh, that's just too bad. She wanted to say <laughs> hi to everyone. Oh, oh, that's funny. All right, kids. I attempted to leave us off on a positive note, and then and then she jumped down like the little bastard she is. Ah, there asleep. you go. All right. Fall asleep. I've I've finished my drink. <laughs> You're just cry, baby. Be so tired. All right, everybody's All right. tired, and I still have to schedule and edit this thing for tomorrow. So, well, you need to have another drink because usually the first one makes you tired, and the second one makes you good to go. There we go. Uh, the second one makes me louder. All right, so With Crowder. All right, say the catchphrase. From me to you, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.